Welcome to College Admission in a New World, the AI Advantage. I'm your host, Brennan Barnard. And for the students in the audience, really for all of us, but especially for the students in the audience, uh, AI is going to do things in your lifetimes and your careers that we can only dream of today. And and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about AI and college admission, the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, how you can use it and explore to apply, um, how colleges use it to evaluate and personalize their process. Um, I think we all, uh, my two guests and I, all land on the good category. We, we, we are in Camp Hope rather than Camp Fear. And I am joined uh, by two guests tonight who have lots of, uh, spent lots of time and energy in this area. And uh, Sal Khan is the CEO and founder of Khan Academy and Khan Lab School and Schoolhouse.World. He's also the author of a number of books, but his most recent is Brave New Words, How AI Will Revolutionize Education and Why That's a Good Thing. And Emily Pacheco, who is the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at Loyola University of Chicago. She's also created uh, and um, leads the NACAC AI in College Admission Special Interest Group. So welcome to you both. So if you are just joining us, please click join the chat to make comments or submit your questions. And if you'll go in there now and share with everyone um, as a comment where you're uh, tuning in from, and if you're a counselor or a student or a parent, uh, maybe what grade you're in. And uh, while you're doing that, I want to start off, maybe Sal, we'll start with you. And, you know, just kind of, let's kind of start uh zoom out a little and how do you see AI transforming college admission or the college admission process? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. And I think, you know, not to overplug the book, but I, I, there's a, a chapter where yes. I at least tried to start uh, thinking about this a little bit. Uh, I'll start with where we are now because, uh, um, you know, I write about this. It, obviously, there's a lot of fear around AI doing things like before we even talk about college admissions, you know, just generally doing things like writing essays for folks, which I think most of us would consider cheating if it's used in in, in, in fairly significant ways. Um, and, and we know that college admissions is uh, essays in most cases are a very big component of it. And so there's immediate fear that people start using uh, AIs uh, to, to do a lot of that type of work. Now, for better or for worse, and I'm actually curious what, what both of y'all think, because I think there's this massive gray area um, that existed well before AI, uh, because in most cases, a, a thoughtful I, HI, is, is, is usually even more useful than the best AIs right now. And we know that many folks um, have access either to someone in their family who really know how to navigate the system and know what a great college essay looks like. And... Um, and, and in many cases, people, especially more affluent families, can hire people who at least claim to know what a great college essay looks like. And, and we know from, you know, there's an extreme at this end, which most of us think is pretty ethical. It's like, oh, let's brainstorm with you. Tell me about yourself. Like, oh, well, you should write about that. That's a really cool story. And, you know, Brennan, we've worked a lot with Con Lab School kids. And, you know, I've, I've, I've definitely, and I know you've worked with students who are like, I don't know what to write my essay about. And I'm like, oh, relax. You know, tell me the last time that you laughed. And they said, oh, yeah, there was this moment with my younger brother. I was like, that's an essay. Write an essay about that. That's so moving and it's so unique. Or on the other hand, if they write an essay about something that's kind of mundane and they don't realize it, but it, there's probably going to be 10,000 other applicants that write the essay about the exact same thing, someone like one of us would tell them, hey, I don't think that's going to really differentiate your application when they're reading 10,000 applications and, and you know, Emily is tired. <laughs> She's not going to really perk up when she sees that, that essay. That's already an advantage, but I think most of us think that that's pretty, pretty, pretty ethical to, to be able to have that kind of. And, and so in that dimension, I think AI is going to be a huge leveling of the playing field. So, we're you know, on Conmigo, which is the AI that we have on Khan Academy, that already has activities where it can brainstorm essays with you. And it will go through a very similar process that Brennan, you or I have done with Khan Lab School students, which is like, tell me about yourself. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you know, and, and it, it is informed by what I think good college counselors would do. Uh, you know, tell me where you spend your and and try to pick out interesting things that sometimes the kids think are mundane, but that's actually the the golden nugget. Um, you know, oh, you 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 work at the coffee shop. What, what's it like in the morning? Oh, you're lonely. Okay, tell, write about that. That's an interesting thing. What's it like at the coffee shop at five in the morning? And you have to have this responsibility when you're 16 or whatever it might be. Um, but there's the other extreme, uh, which we know from Varsity Blues, etc., where people are outright writing essays for for folks. Um, and I'd like to believe 
that, that that's not that that that's happens few and far between but i don't know i and i suspect that there are certain cases where it's happening more than than we would like to admit um and i don't i don't think it's great when a human does that and i don't think it's great when an ai does that um i, I think it's great for a human to give feedback maybe but um but to some degree even there the ai is leveling the playing field in that extreme and i think it maybe forces admissions officers to, to think a little bit harder about okay are these essays really able to glean out um things that that can't be gamed in that way yeah yeah i i appreciated that in your book in that chapter like you said about college admission how you know it, what is the role of the essay right in in as we as we think about ai and and to your point with brainstorming i mean i sat down when we were beta testing conmigo i sat down with a whole class of students at con lab school and had them interface with Conmigo as a brainstorming tool. And it was amazing to see some of the stuff that was coming out. So, um, yeah. and, and, I'll, uh, uh, and I don't want to, I'll, I'll say real quick, cause I focused on to now, I'll say something real quick about the future. I think there could be some very interesting things about the future where a, an AI could have a conversation, instead of having to just write a, a canned essay or a fixed essay, maybe the AI from Loyola Chicago can talk to you and interview you in an interesting way at, at scale. And obviously we have to think about bias and other things there, but I think that could in some ways, it's going to, it might be harder to game. Uh, you can't have someone else come in there and, and do that interview for you. Yeah, and let's stick a pin in that because I wanna come back to the both the bias and that kind of interaction. So Emily, um, well, how about your, your thoughts on how AI it can transform or how do you see it transforming college admissions? Yeah, you know, one of the areas that I'm really, really hopeful at for, you know, AI and college admissions is that I think it has the potential to provide a whole lot more students access to quality college counseling. So whenever I'm talking to a room of college counselors, I tell them I wish every student, you know, every high school student had access to one of them. In the perfect world, that would be the truth. That's what we would have. You know, every student having a good high school counselor in their, uh, you know, in their high school or access to a quality independent educational consultant, but it's just not possible. So what I'm, I'm hopeful that these tool, you know, these tools, these AI tools, this access to quality ethical um, AI tools will help kind of democratize access to quality college counseling. And I think that's something that um, we're, we're really, we haven't been able to do is just bringing that to the masses, um, you know, and it's just not going to be possible unless we can scale it um, in an ethical and good way. So, you know, I, I don't, we're not going to take away that work from college counselors. I mean, the, the value of what they do is is going to remain, um, you know, that, that human personal touch, the human skills that can't be replicated by AI, those are always going to be there. But I think there are a lot of things within college admissions that AI can help with and, and could help bring that to more to more students. So I think that's one really, really big way that we're gonna see it revolutionizing um, college admissions. And of course, on the university side, huge changes there as well, just in the way that we are going to be able to effectively uh, process an ever-growing number of applications. So we already are, are experimenting in, you know, in, in the way that we communicate with students, in the way that we're looking at those applications. And um, I hope that we can you know, ethically move forward with that and and do that in in good better ways to make that system even better yeah and i want to come back to that in the, in the ways that it is being used right now in in college admission um and um if if folks have questions please go ahead and put them in the the comment section and also you know we'd love to hear from you if you if you used ai in college your college application process or the search process um, put in the chat, tell us how you're using it, because it'd just be interesting to, to hear from counselors, from students, from parents, um, the way that you're already using it. Um, Sal, you know, one of the things, um, you know, Emily talked about this, this idea of democratizing quality, kind of trusted content and information. What, how should be people be thinking about like the misinformation that's out there? Because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we talk about hallucination and, and these, the, the kind of ability for, for chat GPT and other things to go out to these LLMs and pull information that's not accurate. How should people be thinking about that in relation to admission? Yeah, I, I think in most of the use cases of college admissions, it, well, first of all, the, the, the models have gotten dramatically better even since I started writing the book. 
um, you know, I, I was making a digital literacy video recently where I was trying to show how you handle hallucinations and some of the things that I could always make it hallucinate a year, year and a half ago. Um, the underlying models have gotten better. And I think that's partly because they're re cross-referencing information, et cetera. There's a related problem of math not being qu quite as good as we expect, especially from a computer, but that's obviously based on the way large language models work. It's gotten once again, a lot dramatically better, but I think those fall in much more into the, those are pitfalls if you're doing research using a large language model, or if you're getting some tutoring using a large language model. And these are things that we are trying to do and we are you know, testing uh, out there and we, we think already have value, but you have to be careful when you're doing it. So I tell anyone, hey, if you're using Conmigo or ChatGPT or something to do research, it's great for helping you think th through things, but don't anchor, if it, if, if you say, you know, give me evidence of when this happened and it says, oh, in 1684, this event happened, double check it. It's kind of like talking to a, actually, it's like talking to me. You know, my, my kids might ask a question at the dinner table and I'm like, oh, I think in 1684, this happened. They should double check that. That might be a style hallucination, but I'm, I'm most of the time conceptually in the right, in the right direction. Um, I, I think, you know, some of the things that Emily was talking about of like being able to provide good counsel uh, to you. And once again, I don't think this is a, at all a replacement for the counselor. As, as we know, in most places, there's far more uh, caseload than, than any counselor can handle. Uh, I, I think that's where uh, we, I, I see it giving very high, robust quality uh, information already, as long as it's, as long as it's prompted correctly and it's, and it's has the right sources. Um, so, you know, I, I feel very confident that if someone said use the college and career coach on Conmigo, that it's going to give, and, and, and we don't just prompt it and say, be a great college and career coach and be done with it. We have um, people, Folks like yourself, Brendan, folks like Emily, look at that, what it's doing and saying, okay, this is consistent with the advice I myself would give to a student. So that's a big priority. Everything we're doing, we're not just writing prompts, we're testing it with experts to make sure that it's it's giving the appropriate feedback. Right. And 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 Ava, the 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 chatbot that we've been working on, the virtual assistant we've been working on is is trained on you know over 300 experts, right? And it's just trained on on that information from them. And I guess that's that's kind of a follow up to that. Like, how do you think those virtual assistants will change the way that counseling is done? You know, how how is that going to um, just kind of revolutionize things? Want me to take that one? Or yeah, I don't want to hog the. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to come back to Emily with the next one about a, about a mission. It, we, we will see. It's still very early days. Um, I I think you know. And we, we've been talking about this when we talk about AI tutor, when we talk about an AI teaching assistant, and now if we talk about an AI guidance counselor-ish thing or AI, it's not going to replace the value of that of that in-person time. But we know that a lot of times that a student is doing is working on this brainstorming, it's 11 p.m., they're trying to figure something out, there's no one else available. And I think that's where the AI is going to be really helpful. It's also, as Emily mentioned, it's going to level the playing field where um, now everyone will have access to the same world-class advice. And I think there's always going to be a lot of value from, from having a really great uh, human guidance counselor. But I also know, you know, I, I've, I've met some affluent families who are spending a lot of money on some of these high-priced, um, let's call it college admissions coaches, some of which I think really push the line on ethics. Um, they're not always giving great advice. Like, I don't think they're, they're necessarily, they're, they're in some cases giving fairly for, formulaic advice or outdated advice or just pl flat out wrong advice. Um, so e even for those, you know, hopefully many of these people will realize that they shouldn't be spending $500 an hour um, or $10,000 an admission cycle. Instead, it might be better to just, you know, reference check this with an AI. Uh, hopefully you have, a, you know, reasonable resources at your school. Hope, if you're lucky, if you have people in your family who've navigated the process. Um, that's going to be better sources, but yeah, the AI is going to be able to fill the gaps and, and hopefully level the playing field a bit. Thanks. All right, Emily. So as we look at kind of the work you do in college admission and the work your colleagues do, how is it changing? How is AI changing the way the colleges assess applicants? You know, what are, what are some of the use cases for AI? And I think we have, uh, I think we have a slide that, um, yeah, know. that would be. You're going to put that up. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that we are now using that AI is being used to assess uh, 
students. And I think one of the main ways that's not actually listed here is, is in predictive analytics that, you know, we have new ways to look at data now. And we can look at data at different kinds of data points on students that can really help us build really thoughtful incoming classes. Um, so I know that's one of the big ways it's been used for a while. And of course, you know, it's it's gaining even more usage. Um, but here are a, a lot of, you know, listed additional ways that we're using it. You know, we're really, um, you know, using it to, to re reach, you know, to analyze and reach those enrollment goals. Um, we're also really adjusting the way that we market to our students. Like we're able to write messages that are much more personalized. We are able to, to you know, uh, have chatbots that are available 24 hours. A lot of, um, you know, institutions are, are doing that. Like Sal mentioned, at midnight, you can get quality answers uh, to some of your questions from some universities now. Um, in the application review, it's being used in a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of fear by students and from parents that are thinking that we're using it for the actual decisions to like make the, that final decision. I, and honestly, right now, I don't think many universities are using it for making that final decision. Right. It's used in a lot of ways leading up to that, but not for that final decision. So it's looking at a student's extracurriculars, looking at that essay, trying to find the student that um, will, you know, be more likely to apply, be more likely to deposit, and finally, you know, be more likely to succeed in our specific environment. Um, so we're, you know, really able to use data in a whole new way to build these incoming classes. And, and obviously the goal there is a better fit for the student, so they're a happier student on our campus, and that makes for just a better environment environment, a better, you know, the, the whole community just benefits from AI being used in that way. So I think there's a lot of interesting ways that we're using it, but so right now, not so much for that final decision, just kind of leading up to it, helping us make that better final decision, which is usually made by a human. Right. I think people can, like you said, they can, they can lay down the panic about, you know, AI uh, making decisions on their application. And, and, and I think, um, the idea of predictive analytics, as you talked about, and predictive modeling, I mean, colleges have been using AI for, for years, like, like a decade, right, to, to do predictive modeling and to try to predict who will enroll and um, who will attend. And um, so I, I, that, that piece isn't new. I think a lot of colleges are starting to think about how can they use AI to um, do a first read of the transcript and pull out information, right? And so... Um, but they're, but again, they're using it. A lot of schools are doing kind of a B tests this year, right? They're having a human do it and then they're having the AI do it and, and, and testing to see, um, for accuracy. And so, um, I, I think we'll learn a lot in the next year about how it can be used and can be used in responsible ways. Um, I'd love for you both to talk a little bit, maybe we'll start with you, Sal, and then Emily about kind of this, the idea around bias, um, and, and some of the dangers around bias in college admission. And um, I know Angela Duckworth and her colleagues um, at Penn and uh, at Colorado um, did, did some, uh, some research around the essay and point out um, using AI, human trained AI to uh, pull out ish, uh, pieces of um, character, character traits in, in essays. Um, but how should we be thinking about bias? Yeah, I, I write a lot about this and you know, for, for many reasons, mo many good reasons, bias has turned into a, a, a kind of a, a, a scary word or a bad word. But I remind ourselves that there's there's there all um, s systems have some form of bias in them. And some of some of those pieces you want, um, as we just talked about, you want to bias towards a student that you feel will be a successful member of your community at your school. If you're hiring, you want to bias towards someone who you think will succeed well at your firm. You don't want to bias on things that should not play a factor there, race, gender, on and on and on um, there. And there, I, and I write about this, it's ideally we could be somehow 100% bias free on these things that as, as a society, we say that those shouldn't factor in. Um, but that probably is impossible. But what I, what I, what I say is the, the bar should not be relative to some uh, ideal some perfect uh, perfect scenario it should be relative to the status quo mm -hmm. and i and i know you know admissions officers they go through training and they have multiple people take a look at things but humans are by their very nature we, we are biased um and 
it's not even necessarily biased from one person to us. It could be biased times of day. You know, there's old research studies where someone interviews someone in the morning versus interviews someone, you know, when they're hungry in the afternoon and they're tired and they have a very different read on that, on that person. And, and, and you can imagine if you're reading thousands of applications and essays and all of that, um, you know, I, I've, I've looked through resumes when people apply for jobs at Khan Academy. And yeah, sometimes your, your energy is there and you can go deep and you, and sometimes you're, you're, you're just trying to get through it as, as a lot faster. So what, what I think is interesting about AI systems here are, um, we, I, I think we're going to be able to test them to see if they're by, if, if they are at least or better than the existing systems. And I think that's what we should strive to do. I know there are some admissions offices that are already they're not using it to make the final decision, et cetera, et cetera, just as Emily mentioned, but they are also using it to make sure that the humans aren't over-biased or that the humans aren't overlooking certain applications. Um, you know, I don't know, Emily, if you could, you know, I've, I've had other people in your position tell me roughly, you know, behind closed doors, how much time they have per application, at least on that first screen. It's not a lot of time. I don't know if you're willing to share, but maybe AI could go a little bit deeper on that on that first screen than, than the, the, the humans can. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I agree with all of that. And, and it is, we, we don't spend a lot of time on each application and we are tasked with reading hundreds and hundreds every, every reading season. I read on, you know, an average day about 60 to 70 applications a day, sometimes 40, 50, 60, uh, it can go up to 80 on a really long day and that it gets really long. And um, I would love to say that my energy is the same on that first one as that 60th one, but I don't know any person that could keep up that stamina. Um, so it is, it always has been a big concern of mine, a question of like, how are these admission readers able to kind of, you know, make an, a, a fair decision on everyone? And there are, there are a lot of systems in place, um, you know, Sal mentioned, multiple readers looking at one application, a second read. Um, for us, we have a committee that that, that um, you know that a number of applications will go to. Um, but to me, I actually see AI as being able to possibly fix some of these problems that we have. I mean, it takes hundreds of outside readers the, that you see, you know, the UC system hires to read hundreds and hundreds of them. And to try to get each of those readers to read at the same, you know, the same way on every application, to me, it's just, that's a monumental task. And it's honestly something that I've always kind of questioned the fairness in that system and in admissions in general, just having the, the you know, human error behind it. And so I, I would like to see a system that, you know, doesn't take the human out of it. I mean, we these systems need to be transparent. We need to understand how they work. Students need to understand how they work. Um, I honestly am hopeful that this could make the whole system more, more transparent. Right? right now, I think there's a lot that's really opaque in what's going on in college admissions and a lot that's going on behind closed doors that really needs to be brought out into the open. And so I, I do have hope that there could be, you know, these bringing in these systems and having a, a more consistent, maybe a more consistent way that applications are reviewed. Um, of course, behind these systems, we need to have groups that are, you know, expert ethics experts, social justice experts, people that are, you know, looking at these systems all the time, examining what's happening, um, you know, and making sure that that things are, you know, that, that they're doing what we want them to do. The exciting thing to me is that these systems can be fixed. I don't know how you fix an office of 30 admission readers that are, you know, behaving in a biased way. That's really difficult to fix. I mean, you're lucky to find that and then, you know, try to make adjusted adjustments. And that does happen in admissions office offices. Um, but, you know, just this the potential here to, to be able to fix that within a computer is something you just can't do with a group of humans. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful in that regard. Yeah, I mean, you can have all the anti-bias training you want, but I mean, there's, there's like Sal was saying, there's been studies that have been done about um, application reading on cloudy days, mm -hmm. right? And how the, the decisions change on cloudy days. And then, um, and, and, you know, Emily, like you said, you're, you're, you, you have um, long days and, you know, like I want to get you right after that first cup of coffee and not uh, after lunch. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, and it, it's interesting also to to hear how um, some some tools are helping students, right? Like so so the software platform score just came out yesterday um, with their AI, which they're calling admission intelligence. and it's it's allowing it's it's providing um, predictive analytics for students. Mm -hmm. So it's allowing students to draw on data from 
their high school and schools like their high school and and it's all de-identified right it's all private privacy protected but they are able to then get a sense for where they might be competitive applicants using ai right and so students can use this as in now in the same ways that colleges used to be using it for predictive modeling um so i i just find that super interesting and and um emily you were saying something to me the other day um, about um, how when you read applications, um, there's there's something you were saying about um, kind of the level of um, of uh, bias that goes into that and how you can avoid it. And maybe you can just kind of. Uh, well Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's similar to what we were, you know, just talking about that that it just there there definitely has that built into it as we're reading it. When there's a topic that you know that I mean, you know, there's no bad topic, but there's definitely topics that might uh, you know affect a reader in one way and affect a, another reader in a different way, um, you know. If and so I think that can definitely just come into play there. Um, I do also just want to you you know you mentioned about the, that new tool in Score, and I'm just I'm so excited to hear that. Actually, that was the first. I'm gonna look at that when we hang up and read about that. Um, but I really think that's a great place for students to start is looking at those AI tools that are already built into some of those systems that they're using at their school. So I, that's super exciting. And I think, you know, I encourage students and um, to, to have this conversation at their school of like, what AI tools are available for my usage? Where can I find those? And, um, and also just asking your college counselor, you know, what, you know, about how AI should be used in the college admissions process. So I think that's a great place to start and really excited to hear about that integration. Yeah, and I know I, I remember what you were telling me. Also, was the was um, not around necessary bias. Also, was just the tools that you use. I mean, so, so you were talking about how many emails you respond to in yeah. the general admission email yeah. box, and 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 maybe you could just talk about how that that time okay. savings. Because Sal and I have talked a lot about, and he and you've written about Sal about the idea of kind of. Um, AI empowering kind of human interaction, right? Like taking away the transactional aspects of what we do to empower human interaction. And, and Emily, maybe you can explain yeah. that and then Sal, you could build on that. Yeah, yeah, no, it, definitely. In my work, a big part of an admission counselor's work is responding to student emails. And sometimes that's my personal email, but even once every 10 to 14 days, we rotate into a, the general e email inbox. And that can be a task that requires, you know, in a day, five to eight hours to get through that inbox. Um, of those emails I'm responding to, about 80% of those are pretty, um, they're, they're not deep questions. They're not questions that can't be, you know, couldn't be answered with, honestly, many of them is a, a Google, you know, you can find the answers on Google. They're, they're really, most of them, not complex questions. A lot of questions such as, I need to, you know, cancel my tour tomorrow, or what time do you offer tours? Or, you know, I'm really interested in, in um, you know, physical therapy, you know, where could I find the curriculum? There are a lot of those inquiries are just inquiries that could be answered, you know, by a, by a chatbot or by an AI assistant. Um, and what that would really do, I mean, you know, instead of me spending that seven hours on that inbox, what I would be, what I would hope for is that I could be given a more pointed list of students to do outreach with, because there's definitely not, I didn't say it could answer a hundred percent of those questions. There are definitely a portion of those questions that, you know, really could warrant even a phone call to that student. But right now we're not able to do that. We don't have the bandwidth to be making phone calls to that 5% of students that could really benefit from a human conversation with an admission counselor from Loyola Chicago, um, nor do we really have the way to recognize you know that who that five percent is um so i just see a tool that would really be useful to be able to kind of you know lower the number of general emails that a qualified admission counselor would need to answer and raise the number of emails that would really you know result in meaningful conversations and really be helpful be much more helpful for that student um, in this college admissions process so i'm yeah i'm really hopeful i see you know huge areas where we could really use a chat box to help us do our job better. Sal, so any, any thoughts on that? And, and, and also maybe there's a question here from um, Jenny about kind of um, the giving good prompts, um, well-written prompts, and how you suggest that students learn to write appropriate and strong prompts. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, in some ways they're related questions because yeah. over time you're going to see more special purpose tools for people, in, you know, for admissions officers or for guidance counselors or where 
someone has written the prompts for you. And, you know, on Conmigo, we have a whole series of free tools for educators, including helping draft things like recommendations. And once again, it's not going to write it for you. You have to input a lot and you're going to tweak it, but it, it kind of knows, it has some knowledge about what makes for a, a, a more compelling recommendation and it tries to pull it out of, of, of you as the recommender. So you're going to see more and more tools like that. You mentioned the score thing and, and things like that. Um, but in the, in the meantime, there's, it's not, it's not super hard for someone to also push the AI. You know, we have a, a, a place where you can prompt Conmigo. Obviously people can use things like chat GPT and uh, I'm, I'm, I would assume in the next year, you're going to see things integrated into our, into our Gmail and whatever else we use, where it'll just like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's seen Emily answer that 80% of question already five times or someone. And so it's just going to autocomplete the whole email uh, with, with, based on previous thing. I, I think this is, you know, Emily's not going to have to do anything. This is just going to show up one day in, in whatever email application she uses. Um, with that said, it is a very powerful skill to be able to push prompts, uh, to create prompts. And whether it's for improving productivity and workflows for all of us, or whether it's, you know, doing something like, you know, helping create an essay, et cetera. Now that starts to get into this ethical gray area, unfortunately, um, because I, I, I think today that um, there are some students who are very good at this. They're world-class at prompt writing, um, which in some ways should put a feather in their hat for admissions, but they're so good at it that I think that they can prompt chat GPT to write an essay that would be, you know, it would be very hard to, 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 for, for a human reader or any reader, honestly, to recognize. And I've tried doing this myself. I remember in the early days when I write about this in the book, you know, we had access to chat to, to GPT-4 six months before even chat GPT existed and chat GPT wasn't even based on GPT-4. And one of the first things I did that weekend was well, how is this going to affect admissions? And I, and I, I, I say this, I hope it'll probably scare you, Emily, a little bit, but the, you know, I, 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 I gave like the most, the profile of someone you would not want to admit, you know, I said, I'm into basketball, but I'm kind of lazy. So I don't want to be on the team. I want to be a computer scientist. Cause I hear there's a lot of money in it. <laughs> I said like, you know, all of these things. And I said, help me write an essay for school X. Um, the first essay it created was, you know, it was a fairly bad essay. Um, it looked like it was written by an AI. Um, uh, I said, come on, this is school X. Have you seen their acceptance rate? Do you know how many applicants they read? Make it awesome. The next version was pretty good. I, ca I went six, seven iterations down that road. And by the seventh iteration, uh, but all of this took me about 20 minutes. Um, I'm like, oh my God, just based off that really bad information that I gave it, it wrote a pretty compelling essay. It wrote this essay about how so many people are trying to build, you know, do extracurriculars for their college applications, but I do it because of my joy. And so that's why, that's why I didn't you know, join the team. I, I play for, you know, it, and, 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 it, and it, if, if someone just showed up with that essay, I was like, oh, this is a pretty good essay. This is pretty novel. This is pretty. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little afraid of, of people who are, I, I, and I, I actually don't think, I mean, you know, this is, I, I, I probably will, will go against the grain of the admissions community a little bit here. Um, I, I think, we should not put the burden on students to figure out where that gray area, is. like what, what part of that is ethical and what part isn't. Uh, Cause it's, 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 it's a really hard thing to judge. And the temptation is so, so strong. I, I actually think it's on admissions to, to, to think about how they can find signals that are not as gameable. And as I point out, a, all AI is doing is putting a spotlight on the gameability. I think this gameability, because as we know, there's unethical coaches um, that are doing this for, have been doing this for students for decades. So it makes me wonder how you wrote your book all of a sudden. <laughs> um, and Emily, you know, you, um, you've done some, you've kind of been digging into that a little, some of that, that transparency yeah. around like different policies and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I also just want to mention, talk a moment about prompts because I, I've had so many conversations with high school counselors and other educators who have tried to use ChatGPT or tried to use an AI tool. And um, a lot of them, you know, in the very beginning stages, and then I've had a conversation with them and they say, it you know, it didn't work for me. AI doesn't work. It's it's really, it's it's not a good system. And 
I've started asking a follow-up question of, tell me how you used it. What were you trying to do? Okay, what prompt did you use to do that? And what I'm finding at nine out of 10 times is what they're doing is trying to use AI the same way that they used Google. And of course, that's what we're all going to do. We have all been trained for the last, you know, a long time of how to use Google, of, you know, how to write a question for that. And that's how our brains work. And now, Writing prompts is a different way of writing, and you really have to adjust that for a new system. So um, it's pretty quick that I'm able to, you know, point out that hey, look, try this kind of prompt or try adjusting it in this way, um, and and maybe you have a better an outcome. And many of these people have come back to me and said, "Wow, I, I, it's incredible. It was the way that I was using this tool. It wasn't the tool. It was the way I was interacting with that tool." Um, so yeah, and I think. You know, Sal, you're exactly right that we cannot leave this up. You know, it shouldn't be the student's responsibility to figure out how to use this. And that's what's happening right now. And that's because there is a lot of fear out there. Um, I think, you know, there's fear from students that they're going to be, you know, told that they're plagiarizing, even if they're using it in what we would consider an ethical way. There's fear from college counselors who are thinking, you know, what if the university comes out with this really like black and white, it's terrible. And here I am, I've been teaching ethical AI usage. And then all of a sudden the conversation changes. Uh, and and then you also have university, you know, admissions people that are fearful because they just aren't, don't understand the tool. They're not quite sure, you know, the best way to approach it. Um, and what we're seeing is just a lack of clear policy part of most university admission offices. There are a few offices that are really, you know, on the forefront of that. Um, you know, Georgia Tech is in, in incredible in, in the policy that they've uh, put out there for students. And I'm not talking about the university level AI policies. We're, we're seeing those more across the board. I mean, I, I think it would be hard to find a university that hasn't addressed that in some way, shape or form by now. Um, but at the admission office level, that needs to be addressed. We need to state clearly how it can be used, how it can't be used, what our expectations are. And one of the main reasons I think that's really important is I think that once we are more clear on that, that's gonna bring more people to the table to talk, have that conversation of, we need to make sure our students are using this ethically. Let's implement, you know, AI education in college admissions, you know, uh, curriculum in our pro within our college counseling offices and that is really what needs to happen that's you know the next step i get i think we're getting closer there um you know i am finding more and more university policies uh you know each week that are coming out that out um some of them are absolutely terrible um you know they are just written by clearly by people that don't understand ai um there's a lot of policies that are making it that uh, making it basically impossible for a student to apply to them without breaking, you know, the the, the way that they've written, you know, without breaking those policies. Um, you know, there's no, a number of universities, you'd literally have to use a paper, a pen, an envelope and a stamp, because as soon as you turn on Google and use a Google Doc, you are using AI, that system is built into it. And so policies that are making the statements that are saying, you know, any usage of AI is considered unethical, you're just saying, you know, it's impossible to apply to our, you know, university without using a computer, you know, while while using a computer. Um, so yeah, I just really think that's important. That's really what brought me to this conversation was looking for resources, looking for guidance, looking for leadership in this space and not finding it and thinking, how do we build that? And that's really, you know, having these conversations and bringing these people to the table um, and, you know, bringing that education out there because our kids need it. They're already using it. They're using it in good ways. They're using it in absolutely terrible ways. Um, and we just need to make sure that we are helping, you know, yep. create that fame framework of how we expect expect them to use it. And it's going to be an ongoing conversation, I'm sure. Right? Sal, can we just turn um, a little to, you have a whole chapter in your book on assessment and how assessment's going to change. And as we think about uh, standardized testing and assessment in college admission, um, how do you see AI kind of influencing that? And what as where's the puck going with that? I'll tell you where I hope it's going. Um, you, you know, even before AI, obviously things like standardized tests have always, uh, people, I guess no one loves them. Some people hate them. Some people say, Oh no, but we kind of need them. And I, you know, I've, for people who are very anti-standardized tests, I've always said, well, you know, which part do you not like? Do you not like the, the, the assessment part? Or do you not like the standardized part? 
And and then you know when you phrase it that way, they're like, no, no, yeah, it, it, you need to assess certain things, and it's better to do it in the standardized way than in a non-standardized way. But usually, the underlying problem with standardized assessments, which I actually kind of agree with, is um, the pers- any admissions officers will tell you that it's, it's only one part of a broader application. But for for unfortunately, I think a lot of students and families think that it is like the headline and it is the one thing that's going to de- decide their own fate. So it creates all of the stress and it creates all of the stress around a, a fairly narrow set of things that it, that, that it can signal. Um, it, it can't signal your personality. It can't signal your communication skills. It can't signal your creativity, uh, all of which are, are your collaboration skills, all of which are super important for, for success in at college and, and in life. Um, so my, my hope is that AI will help assessments broaden uh, and broaden in ways that can both be richer and more scalable. Uh, you know, uh, the whole college admissions process is an assessment of, of, of a form, but then you have your standardized parts, which are the SAT, ACT, uh, which are narrower, but you have a clear score that you can compare. And then you have the, the rich parts that are very non-standardized, like the essay or the recommendations or potentially the interviews. And we've already, we spent most of our time talking about the bias there and how messy it is and how tempting it could be for, you know, there's a huge ethical gray area, blah, 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 blah. I think we're, we're going to be, go to a world and Khan Academy has some projects working on this too, where um, I, I, I'd like to believe that in 10 years, college admissions, any student who wants to apply to any school, they click on a button and a, an AI starts talking to them about their life and spends as much time with them as they want <laughs> about talking about et cetera, et cetera. And, and that AI is, is, and then can report back to the Emily's of the world saying, Hey, you know, I had a really interesting conversation with this young person. And by the way, here, here's the summary, here's the footage of it. You can see the, their affect. You could see how they worked. We even did some simulations together. We did this. And, um, and, you know, I've, I've had a similar conversation with 10,000 other students. And based on that, this student is really spiking in communication or was really funny. Um, and, you know, these things like humor and collaboration and, and affect, there, there was no standardized test for it. Um, I think you'll start to see signals that can emerge in more standardized ways. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, Emily, so, so that sounds like kind of Sal's wish list for, for the future of AI and emission. As we, as we wrap up here, what, what would be your kind of like, what, where do you see the trends going and what do you, what, what's your greatest hope? Yeah, no, I, I definitely have been, you know, have questioned for a while the effectiveness of our current application system and what we're doing, you know, to to build these incoming freshman classes. I mean, the goal of, you know, of, of an admission office is to build a good quality class that meets a number of our goals. Um, and I just am not quite sure that the things that we're asking for that those grades that that those that standardized t- standardized test score, um, you know, that application, that the looking at those extracurriculars, I just don't know if that's the right way to do this. And so, you know, I'd say I th- higher ed moves very slowly. So anybody that is afraid of anything we're talking here, I don't think this is something that will change in the next five years dr- dramatically. Um, you know, it's been, this is a system that was a long time coming. It, 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 you know, has been in place for a very, very long time. But I do have hope that in 10 years, um, we will have a different system, a system that is more transparent, a system where a student under a student understands what is happening, a, a system where maybe a Man, she was about to say something really. Oh no! Did I? I came back. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I got, I, my, I lost you for a second. Um, but yeah, just I'm just very hopeful that it will be a system where we can better assess our students in multiple different ways, not just that test score, not just those grades, um, you know, that we can do it in a more dynamic way with the usage of AI um, to really find those gems, find those students that we're not reaching at this point, make college more accessible, but also use this to find other options for students. I think, you know, we're a little bit right now black and white, like four-year university or nothing. And there's so many parents listening tonight that feel that, you know, if their kid didn't go down that four-year route, it would just be tragic. And I think that there are other really great viable options, and there are going to be more and more great viable options in the next 
three, five, 10 years. And I really think AI is gonna help that, is really gonna change the way our students study and the way the options that are out there for them. So I'm very, very hopeful in that way. And I'm also just really hopeful that it's going to change the way that admission offices function. Um, you know, I think it's gonna totally change the way that we operate. Um, I think it's gonna bring much more meaningful work. We're gonna be able to interact with our students um, in more meaningful ways, spending more time doing that and less time doing tasks that really could have been, should have been automated, you know, years ago, and that we continue to do. So um, those are some of my hopes, you know, in, in the AI world. Well, I am inspired by you both and hopeful that uh, with, with folks like you kind of pushing the envelope, uh, we will get there and maybe sooner rather than later. So um, thank you both. Thanks for all you do. And uh, thanks for those who attended tonight and for watching College Mission in a New World, the AI Advantage.